Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today we are covering The Deep House, which if you haven't seen the movie yet, just a heads up, it is like a combination of French and English, so make sure that the version you get has uh, subtitles for yes. whichever language you don't understand. <laughs> Probably French. <laughs> um, it was available for us on Prime with the subtitles. Yeah. Uh, which we'll we'll link all of the versions that we found below for viewing. Yeah. But anyways, as always. Uh, but before we go into the reveal, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So I am drinking. I I have no more of it now, but I am drinking the Plum Deluxe Strawberry Honeysuckle Black Tea. It's got black tea, strawberry pieces, raspberry leaf, calendula, which I've heard some people pronounce it calendula so i don't know which is a correct pronunciation and it's got honeysuckle essence and i am drinking yogi's women's raspberry leaf tea which just has straight up organic raspberry leaf easy easy yeah (laughs) i did add a little bit of sugar for sweet oh nice (laughs) <laughs> Thank you to Plum Deluxe for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our tea sippers out there, brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, for The Deep House, this is by someone on IMDb. One of the users summarized this. No, it was too perfect. So, credit to that person on IMDb. A young and modern couple who go to France to explore an underwater house and share their findings on social media undergoes a serious change of plans when the couple enters the interior of a strange house located at the bottom of a lake and their presence awakens a dark spirit that haunts the house. I'd say spirits, but... Uh, Yeah, I was about to say, I I feel like there were multiple spirits, but okay. Close enough. (laughs) So, for for entertainment, I would give this movie a 7.5. I have watched this a handful of times. It's, It's like one of those movies where... The movie itself really freaks me out because it's underwater, and I'll go into more detail later, but it's like whenever you, like, really think about it, it's like, oh, this is, like, a very typical horror movie that they just, like, were like, oh, let's do it underwater, (laughs) you know? They just took it a step further. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. They just changed up the, the formula, like, ever so slightly. It was an abandoned haunted house. And they just decided to do it underwater. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, it's it's a very modern-day, like, horror-typical characters where the guy is obsessed with trying to become viral and the girl just wants to be with him. And when she states, like, a fear, he ignores it. Like, there's so many horror films nowadays that have that dynamic of characters so i will say that the characters in this movie were kind of bland and as you said it is a pretty typical haunted house story um, but with it being set underwater it kind of brings an eerie new element to to it especially whenever their the bodies come to life and they're moving yes. Like that, that honestly, it was an unsettling nature of everything being perfectly intact under the water and then the movement of the bodies. Like it, it very much helped with the otherworldly, like unnatural movement of the, of the ghost. And it also, with water being added it adds an extra layer of helplessness to the situation because not only do they have to worry about their oxygen levels but they also you don't you can't move as fast underwater there's a lot of lot more resistance Mm -hmm. and so it's like yeah you're swimming away but it's like how much farther can you get ahead of these bodies you know 
but the the thing where well and to add one other thing the movie does have really good tension it makes you feel on edge because you're kind of wondering especially like whenever they're running away from the the people and then the fireplace collapses at that point in time i'm wondering the whole time where are the ghosts like <laughs> like what's gonna happen but this movie does kind of fall apart if you pay attention because some of the camera movements only make sense uh is if it was a movie uh so like when tina sees the father ghost uh after the fireplace caves in she looks then turns and then looks back at him and he's closer. I'm sorry, nor no normal person would keep looking back and forth and see that he got closer and then run away. You would turn, see him coming, and you'd immediately run away. So there were some things mm-hmm. that made it really obvious that even though it's like a quote-unquote found footage type of movie, which it's it's one of those found footage movies where it's very much uh it kind of mixes between mm-hmm. like a normal camera and then found footage which that always kind of breaks the immersion for me cuz it's like well decide one or the other you don't have to have both but I get where you're coming from but I actually kind of appreciated it in this one at least mm. it felt like a nice balance mm. Like, it, it wasn't as distracting as some other movies I've seen. Yeah. But the camera movements that they did with what was supposed to be specifically the found footage, there were a few scenes that it did definitely kind of take away the the immersion. But yeah, it's like, entertainment-wise, if you like the niche of haunted houses and you just want, like, a little bit different of a setting i feel like this is a movie worth watching like it's a, it just hits my my eerie button extra good because it's underwater and it just oh it just wigs me out every time but i definitely can see the flaws that this movie has absolutely so i give this one a 6.5 there are just too many things in the realism scale that take <laughs> me out of the the movie mindset Mm -hmm. and makes me question things. And once you start pulling at that thread, it's just the whole thing unravels, (laughs) but the characters are all right. They're a little overdone. Like we've seen these characters a thousand times or more. Yeah. I hate the characters. They're like, Oh, we want to go viral. We want to go viral. It's like, do, do these people. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, do these people know anyone that's in the younger generation? Because nobody, I mean, there, there, there's a few exceptions. Like, some people have died to try and, like, go viral or take a selfie or whatever. Like, there are those instances, but it just, it doesn't need to be in every single movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're already beat over the head with it as it is in everyday life. We don't necessarily need it in a movie as well. Yeah. And if you do have those characters in a movie, we don't mind if they die right away. Yeah, like, have them be one of the sub-characters in, like, a group yeah. of people that, like, die They're off. Just characters that we care about. <laughs> yeah. Not to say that we don't root for these characters as we're watching the movie, but at the same time, we've just, we've seen it all before. <laughs> a yeah. A lot. Really, the character that I rooted for most was, was the girl. Yeah. But it's, like, even with her uh, fate at the end of the movie... It, it's kind of like, well, that's kind of deserved because he told you you needed to practice and you didn't and you didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, and Even if she had practiced a lot, it still wouldn't have necessarily helped. Like, Especially in a, a panic-inducing situation like that, it's going to be hard to to hold your breath that long, as long as you need to. Yeah, so, I guess it's... They were pretty deep down there. yeah. All things considered, she that's the thing that is a little frustrating and kind of sad was that she was so close. Yeah, I'm like the freedom. Like to me, I'm like, if she could have just held her breath for 30 more seconds. Yeah. 30 more seconds. She would honestly, been she probably would have only needed about 10. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I'm like, well, she should have practiced more. Like I like to me, I'm like, if she could have held her breath for five minutes and in a panic situation only be able to hold it for like three or whatever like at least she would have had more wriggle room because she's starting on the low end 
and in a panic situation, which like cuts it further. I don't know. I I gave her a pass for that because it it also takes a lot for her to have had to get out of that situation to begin with and then to claw her way through that tiny opening yeah from the basement to the mausoleum yeah and then start to to swim up as well and half of that was done with weights yeah which she did take off once she was outside of the mausoleum which was good and helped her but still it just it wasn't quite enough and also i wasn't too frustrated Because logically speaking, even if she had reached the surface, then Pierre would probably have finished the job anyway. Yeah, that's true. They were kind of screwed after, like, saying that they'd go with him. A little bit. Yeah. So, (laughs) it's just frustrating to see that the surface was right there. (laughs) And also, we don't know if, like, maybe the bodies would have been able to swim after her and then they pulled her under. Yeah. Like, we don't know if they're actually, like, literally trapped in the house or if they could have swim around the lake. Oh, God. There's no telling. Yeah. I'd imagine that they were bound to the house, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. So, and again, even if she had made it to shore, Pierre probably would have finished the job. So. Yeah. She would have had a whole other set of problems. (laughs) So they were just screwed no matter what. Yeah, um, it was, there were some cliches in it as well that just, apart from the whole influencer thing, it was the girl being all panicky, hyperventilating constantly, like, it it wouldn't have been as bad of a situation if she had had more air to deal with at the end of it, but she yeah. was screaming half the movie yeah. and hyperventilating the other half. Yeah. So, yeah. She it is kind of frustrating. her air supply. Yeah, because you're like, calm down, calm down. Like, I know you're panicked, but calm down. (laughs) Hold your breath a bit every now and then, if you would, please. Just (laughs) so we can pay attention to the movie, if nothing else. (laughs) But also so you can conserve air. (laughs) But it's just, she was way too panicky to be in that situation to begin with. And even when they start to see things and the guy is starting to realize that there's more going on, then he's trying to let on Mm -mm. it just it feels almost like he's in denial for movies got a movie reasons so it's just he's honestly probably the most frustrating character in the movie yeah Uh, as annoyed with her as i got he was the most frustrating (laughs) yeah like what did you think of the jump scares because that is one thing that i did forget to mention is there are like a few jump scares that where you're like really like then yeah, them opening like the, the thing to the yes it's like there's a few that are a little bit ridiculous yeah but possible there's there's a couple that were possible and that made sense in the situation but i feel like they still relied a little too heavily on them mm-hmm. especially where the ghosts were concerned yeah like they were freaky enough as is you don't necessarily need to have the big loud noise with the scare yeah like so. it definitely feels like a Blumhouse movie, even though oh, yeah. apparently Blumhouse only bought the rights to distribute it. Um, it is more uh, originally a English language French movie, but I, it feels like a Blumhouse movie with some of the the cheap scares. Right in their wheelhouse. I almost wonder if Blumhouse did some editing and added some stuff. They might have. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. Now the. The way that they moved and all was accurate, the ghosts in the place, and um, it was really well done. So the actors and actresses that that played those roles did a good job, and I appreciate it. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) I do, because it did a good job of it. (laughs) They did a great job, and it looked really good and freaky, and it did its job because it freaked you out. So, you know. Bravo to them. (laughs) But that's what I got for entertainment. Okay. Well, for realism, as you said, like, the surface level when you watch the movie, it's enjoyable. But as you start picking it apart and the possibilities, it it slowly, like, unravels. 
Yeah. So I I think a two is pretty reasonable for the most part. It's like the spelunking stuff and uh, uh live streaming it and trying to go viral. That I can see. Um, I More actually been exploring than spelunking. There were no caves involved. That's true. That's true. But um, I know I've actually have watched a few of those videos where they go into abandoned buildings and and explore and stuff like that. It's just interesting to me. But where it falls apart the most is well, first I don't know how long they have been together as a couple, but I just it seems like uh he would have been able to trust her a little bit more. Like, obviously I feel like she had a good level of trust. Well, somewhat trust for him. Cause whenever he'd try and calm her down, she had normally like try and listen and calm down. But as far as him, he just kind of seemed to like dismiss her, which I mean, can happen in um, couples. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm just saying if they were had like a closer relationship, it just seems more likely that they would have a little bit stronger of a, a trust with each other. But, you know, that that's just kind of like throwing into the void the different possibilities. Uh, but the, the house being so intact definitely didn't make sense because they literally were flooding the area and they're telling people to evacuate. So that means that all of this flood water was coming towards it. So you would see damage from like the water hitting the house. Um, the furniture and doors would have been damaged from the wash- rushing water. Uh, at most, well, at least I should say, like the the furniture instead of staying in place would have been like pushed to one side of the wall where like the water would have like come and like pushed it. Uh, from the, the, the current the if it was like a whirlpool kind of situation yeah yeah so the ha- the fact that the house was just so intact with the water while i appreciate how creepy that was not very realistic uh, also one thing that i didn't notice until this la- last watch which really bugged me is uh, whenever Ben, it's right after the fireplace collapses and Ben is in the nursery. Whenever the mother uh, ghost opens the door, it's very obvious that like Ben can see her. The door is open. There's no way she can't see him. And what's his choice to go and hide under the bed? And the fact that she just like stands there pretending that she's, it's like. <sighs> She just stands there almost like she's looking for him. And then uh, they they close out that scene with a jump scare. Like, that felt way too set up. And I felt, I, I think, I can totally see the door slowly opening. and he Or, like, hearing, or he can hear, like, something outside. And then he goes and hides under the bed. Like, it's a very easy fix for them. But, no, they... Mother opens the door. Mother sees Ben. Ben sees mother. He goes under the bed. <laughs> it's just ah! <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, the the most realistic aspect to me was the scuba diving. Now Jess is the scuba di- a scuba diver of the group, so I don't know much about it. But all of the things that I'm like, okay, that seems like very plausible. Was more like the the scuba diving aspect. But as far as like every other part. Of the the trip, like the fact that they were so trusting of uh, what was the guy's name again? Pierre. Pierre. Okay. I was like, I thought so, but I didn't want to say it wrong. Anyways, the fact that they were so trusting of him, and uh, like I can imagine like meeting with him a couple of times just to like build that trust or just making sure that he's not a dangerous person because there's people that prey on tourists all the time. I mean, the fact that, that they went alone with him, they don't know. He, they, he could have led them to an area that had a bunch of other people and then they could all gang up and rob them. Like there's so many different possibilities and they are just like, Oh, we will blindly trust you. This is fine. Everything's fine. 
Sure. Well, we don't know you. We just met you 10 minutes ago, but we'll go with you to a secluded way out here in the middle of nowhere, hours away, without notifying anyone. And then not only are we going to leave our vehicle here, we're going to hike a couple more miles. Yes. To a different location. He could have killed them and hid the bodies and no one would know. Yeah. So it's like, you know, in much older horror movies like 50s 60s when like serial killers aren't like a huge thing yet and and i feel like now hiking was more of a thing yeah like that i can see that that happening but in modern day where people are so paranoid like we're texting our gps locations to people and and doing all sorts of stuff for safety i i don't feel like it would happen this would happen but that's what I got. So I give it a 1.5. and <laughs> Pretty close. It's just, again, when you start pulling at little threads that are sticking out, the whole thing unravels. So them following Pierre after having just met him. Yeah. And talk to him for like five minutes, maybe. They're going to go driving with him for God knows how long to an undisclosed location without telling anyone where they are, where they're going, who they're with, anything like that. Yeah. And then they're going to leave their vehicle <laughs> and hike with their equipment for a couple miles. And then they're just expecting Pierre to hang out and wait for him for however long, about an hour or so while they're scuba diving so that he can potentially guide them back to where they were back to their hotel or wherever like that just seems so sus like he's too nice you know yeah yeah i mean they said it was for a fee he would take them out there so i guess to them that made it seem a bit more legit but that means absolutely nothing (laughs) to be perfectly honest that means absolutely nothing (laughs) yeah then they get down there the the gear them itself is actually fairly well done. It's one of the best that we've seen in movies. <laughs> like it's an actual mask that has the um the ability to talk. And they do have the things on their ears so they can hear each other, which is lovely. And like a certain 47 meters down <sighs> and countless others. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So this was actually really nice. Um, The fact that they had to shield different things like they were using GoPros and all, but they had a a bigger camera on their their drone and they had to shield it with a case, like mounted casing. So that was nice. Um, But the the dead bird on the, the gate was kind of a giveaway of how bad and inaccurate it was going to be <laughs> in the house because it was way too fresh. Like it was just put on the gate. Yeah. Um, otherwise it would have been rotted or even if it was from earlier that day, if Pierre had decided I'm going to put a hawk there and affix it to this gate today before I go con some dumbass tourists. Um, the there would have been fish like actively picking on it <laughs> and eating yeah. it because the the water world is fairly brutal and fish will literally pick at anything. <laughs> but now that I think about it, since I flooded that area, how would there have been fish there anyways? Well, I guess it depends on. It became a lake a few decades before. I know, and but it's a lake. They're going to stock it. I guess it depends. Because it's like, I can see, like, if the water originated from another body of water, like a river, then yeah. But And there could be some tributaries in the area. But honestly, even with man-made lakes and all like that, they do stock them. Hmm. Like, they fly in fish and but stock was, the lakes. But wasn't and that... And those fish breed. What is, wasn't that, like, an abandoned area, though? No. Not fully. Okay. It connected to the other part of the lake. It was just a bit more secluded. Okay, okay. It was just harder to get to. The beach wasn't accessible. 
Oh, okay. All right, I'm satisfied. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that wasn't the thing. It was... It was the too well-preserved bird carcass and everything in the house ever. <laughs> the house had been underwater for decades. Stuff rots. <laughs> and in, in water, it rots really quick. Yes. <laughs> now, I know it depends on the pressure, but they weren't... It does. Even though they were deep, they weren't that deep. They weren't that deep. And it also depends on the lighting and weather conditions and everything like that. But again, at least... At least a couple decades. It was probably closer to 30 years. So, no. <laughs> so, like, the books that you can still kind of flip through the pages and it's still legible on every page. No. The pictures on the wall that are still, you know, you can still tell what they are and see all the details in the picture. I can understand maybe some of the ones in an actual frame, but even those are, are really sus. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that are just pinned to the wall though. No. Yeah. Those would have deteriorated completely and been gone. <laughs> um, there were things floating that shouldn't have been like the piano and other things that weren't floating that would have been lighter. So like if a piano is floating, everything else basically is going to be floating as well. Doesn't it depend on the buoyancy though? It does. It uh, does. But those pianos that they were showing in the movie, freaking heavy. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not disputing <laughs> that the piano went. Be yeah, uh, I'm just pointing out the inconsistencies. Yeah, of like the table nearby was firmly planted. Yeah, and not moving, but the piano, a little ways away, was halfway up the wall. Yeah. So no. Um. <laughs> And a lot of things would settle anyway. Um, mm -hmm. The barrier in front of the front doors was metal and should not have had fingernail markings on them. Just saying. If it was wood, I can understand, even though it would have been rotted away. But it was metal and shouldn't have had the fingernail markings. Um, the bodies being intact, granted, they were supposed to have been like ghosts or whatever at that point and just playing the part. But still, they wouldn't have been in that intact at all. Um, I totally should have mentioned that too, but oh well, you got it. Even if they were actual bodies, the dude is a total a-hole and a dumbass for continuing to film with the intention of posting it. Honestly, most platforms, if not all, wouldn't have allowed it anyway. Oh yeah, like whenever that shit gets posted online, it's down within hours. Yes, so, no. Um, even if they had the express permission from Next of Kin to post it, mm -hmm. it still would have been taken down. Yeah. So, no. Mm -mm. Um, again, the way the, the bodies did move in the water was perfect, honestly. <sighs> Done. No. <That> was <laughs> um, but it, the, the girl had no business scuba diving at all, honestly. Yeah. She was she was not as experienced as she should have been. She was too panicky. If she's that panicky, then she shouldn't be going down there. Yeah. Here. It's like one of those things where it's like, they obviously were optimistic and was like, oh, nothing's going to go wrong. But it's like, you have to plan for yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yes. And with the buddy system, which you really should not be diving alone ever, if you can help it. Um, then he should have found a better partner <laughs> to go down there with, honestly. Yeah. Um, also, I know it was a little closer to the beginning, but when she gets her flipper stuck on the tree, oh, brand, yeah. I don't understand how she even managed that. It was so perfect. Be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was a clear indication that she should not have been down there. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. But yeah, it, there was just too much in the house that I was sitting there like, well, that's not right. or <laughs> That's not realistic or that definitely wouldn't happen. That's some BS. <laughs> so it just, it really takes out the immersion for me when I see a lot of that stuff. A few things here and there. Okay. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But when you're going through the entire house. <laughs> 
and all of it is just no. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. it becomes a problem. And yeah, it just brings it down. Yeah. So this one, it was all right. And I'll probably watch it again at some point because it is, it's decent with some good scares mm-hmm. or some good tension. But it overall just kind of falls a little bit short for me. Yeah, like like if you really think about it, it's just an okay movie, but the underwater element does make it a lot more interesting to watch at least once. But yeah, it's like it's got bland characters, the story is kind of bland, honestly. And it I feel like it's one of those where unless if you're very specific like me and you find otter underwater stuff creepy you're probably not gonna go back and watch this one again it was honestly better watching it the first time not picking it apart too much yeah because upon multiple viewings just more and more things stick out that you're like yeah that's not right that's not realistic that's not how that would go yeah i mean that's like the um the whole like camera movement i didn't watch or notice that until like the third or fourth watch yeah but yeah it so, is yeah <laughs> this is one of the few like the the less you watch it the better yeah probably yeah you'll you'll remember it more fondly if you watch yes. it only once or twice <laughs> yes yeah but thank you so much for joining us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie game or tea, you can leave us a comment or join our discord server. And if you'd like to keep up to date with our content, you can find our link tree listed below. If you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. We also have a Teespring and a PayPal donate button if you'd like to support us monetarily. And our Plum Deluxe affiliate link will be down below as well. It does not affect the price of the tea. It just helps us to continue to do what we love. And you can find all of the sites mentioned linked below. Until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye. Bye.